Sometimes pivot tables are limited in terms of what you can add as measures, as aggregations. For example, you can right click and you can choose summarize values by, and you can get these options, and you get show values as, and you get some more options here. But sometimes you want to do something different. For example, here, sales per singer. And what I'm going to show you in this video is how you can build your own ones. They look like this. They're called measures. And how you can do that inside of Excel using something called Power Pivot and the DAX coding language. And I'm also going to show you how to do it in Power BI because actually it's exactly the same technology. I'm going to do it from the Excel perspective. So given that you are likely to be a, an Excel user who understands your way around formulas, how to go from that into this world. So my name is David Van Arman. I have tons of videos on Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos on this kind of stuff. I love talking about the new stuff. So so in Excel, let me maximize this and we'll come back to Power BI a bit later. If you want to get this data to allow to have measures, then you need to use something called the data model. So if you go to a pivot table here and you choose here, add this data to the data model, you need to take that in order to get it to work. So I'm going to do an existing worksheet. I'm going to choose the existing worksheet location to be here so we can see our questions like that. Note that I like to have it like this, but the default is like this, but then you have to constantly scroll up and down. So I choose this one. Um, and also note that you could do this if it wasn't a table already by selecting it and going to insert pivot table from the data model. But then it just calls it range and there's less functionality within it. So best to use insert and table. I have another video that I'll link to that shows you how to do that. Tables are amazing and you should be using them <laughs> for a lot of things, not just this. So let's get started by doing stuff that we can already do within pivot tables. So if I wanna get spectators, I can right click on this and I can choose add measure. There is another way to do this and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit later. So I'm going to call this spectators in measure name and I'm going to say equals sum of spectators. This is spectators at event. That's the name of the column, spectators at event. Uh, so sum, pretty similar to Excel. And if you've used tables before in Excel, then the formula notation is pretty simple. You just write the name of the column inside. Note that with pivot tables, you do aggregations based on the entire column rather than just cell by cell. You know, in a cell range, you have the entire column. So I would say here, in a description, you can add a number type. For example, I could do number and use a thousand separator. And then I press OK, and I get this popping up with the FX over there. I can add it to my data model, and I can choose that looking at city. Now, do, note that because if this is just a sum, it's the same as if I do this one. I'll get the exact same results. The benefits are that you can format it automatically. You can give it a custom name, which means you can reuse it later on. So this is explicit measures, whereas this is an implicit measure if you add it here. And you can then choose what to aggregate by or summarize by. In Power BI, definitely you should avoid using implicit measures because it means you get less functionality. Like what I've shown you, and you can't reuse them in measures like we're going to use it in a little bit. So going into um, some of the stuff that you can only do within Power Pivot is count rows and distinct count. So over here, for example, if I wanted to get a count, so how many concerts were there? Now, with the regular Excel, if I add any one of these, it will show me the same numbers, 51, 46 maximum, total 208. And that's because if I filter here, for say Bangkok, I can see down here, it says 51 out of 208 records found, which is exactly the same as showing me 51 out of 208. So you can get them by dragging any field inside the values and doing a count, which is why when you add a measure, you can right click and add measure. And here I'm going to say concerts and it's going to be equals count rows. So you're counting the rows. You're not doing count or count out, which are rarely used inside DAX, but count rows takes an input of a table so that's going to be my concert data. Note the icon is different to the FX one. Check DAX formula, always good practice to do that. I'm not gonna set my format type because it's just low numbers anyway. If I click that, I get the same numbers as before. You can also do distinct counts. So let's say I wanna know how many cities there are. Um, let's change this. Instead of city here, I'm going to have sponsor in here. And I can see it's only two over there. So I wanna write this formula. I can right click and add a measure and I can choose equals uh, say cities and I can say equals distinct count. Something that you don't get in the regular Excel, annoyingly, I would love for it to be there. It's actually something that exists in Google Sheets called count unique, but not in Excel. So press okay. And then if I go to cities, I get the same as here. Now there is another way to do this. If you go to file and then options, and then you go to add-ins and then you're going to add power pivot. So click on there, you can see that that's a com add-in. So I'm going to go manage, com add-ins go, and then make sure that this is ticked, press okay. And that will unveil the power pivots tab up here, which will give you more functionality, which I'm not going to go through so much in this video. I have another video where I talk about table relationships, but you can open up the power pivot window with this. I don't use KPIs very much, and these are ways to manage it. And further, what we're going to do though is manage measures. 
because from here we can choose new measure and we get a similar screen, but not identical, to be able to do our next calculations. Something you can't do with pivot tables is a median. So I can do median spectators, and here I can say equals median and spectators at event. We're going to choose the one from concept data, not the one from range, because that is one from a non table. Check formula, pretty much the same. Uh, you can add a description or the number type, but I'm just going to press OK there. And then you can just keep going and add more ones. Another one is last date. So I can choose this to be last updated. And then you have last date. It's kind of like max, but for dates. And then we're going to choose the date to be concert date. Close our brackets, check formula. These are just aggregations. And then press OK, like that as well. Uh, then you can add them over here to your pivot table. So the last updated for each one of these sponsors is this date. Now, again, you can edit it if you right click and edit measure. Then let's say we want to have a date and we don't want to have the time. I'm just going to have it like this. And now let's move on to calculate. And calculate is kind of like a super powered summit. So let's say I wanted to do a summit formula. Uh, let's, uh, let's hide some stuff so we can see everything in the same screen. So here I'm going to say equals sum ifs. So sum range of spectators at event. Control space will select the whole thing in a table. And then criteria range is going to be city. And then this one. I'm going to do another criteria, which is Singer, I'm going to say this is only going to be for Britney Spears. Close my brackets and I get this number. As I drag it down, I get that happening in a SUMIF function. Now, it's good to be able to do this with measures because you can do other things like, for example, you can do this one divided by sales and have this all within a measure as a percent. And it could be useful to do for whatever reason. All right, so let's look at how to do this within DAX. So again, we're going to go to measures and then new measure. And then here I'm going to call this Britney Spectators. And I'm going to say here equals calculate. Now, you have some ifs, average ifs, max ifs, min ifs, et cetera, in Excel. In Power BI and DAX, you have an anything ifs. Calculate is kind of like an anything ifs, where you get the expression, then you get filter one, comma, filter two, and you can type in whatever you want as those filters. So you need to think about what needs to be pre-aggregated, and your expression will always need to be pre-aggregated. For argument's sake, let's do it without doing that. So let's say spectators at event, like this. And then in filter, it's kind of like we write a sum ifs, but not exactly. We're going to say the singer, and here we ha are able to use the column. So the column is equal to Britney Spears. Okay. Close our brackets, and then if I press check formula, it will give me this error. It says a single value for the column spectators at event cannot be determined, which means that you need to aggregate it first. So I need to do a sum of spectators, and we've already got a measure called spectators, and it's best practice to reuse these. This way, it all kind of feeds through. So if, if this one ended up being an error, then fixing the error up up in the first measure will make any dependent measures fix. So if I change that and press check the formula, it will give me no errors in the formula. Now uh, I'm going to press OK, and then it will add it here like that. And this is the same numbers as I had before. And calculate can give you more functionality. For example, I can say new measure and I can say equals divide and then Brittany spectators by spectators. Choose the one you want to reuse, put this as a number and a percent. I love the divide function because if it comes out to a divide by zero error, you get in the regular Excel, it would just replace that with a zero by default. And then call this uh, Brittany spectators as percent. Check that formula, that's okay. And then it will add it like this, which is really, really nice. So something that's a lot harder to do in the regular pivot tables and actually use lots of filters and custom calculations in the regular Excel. So let's move on to how this looks in Power BI and do a little bit more stuff. So here I am in Power BI, and in Power BI, you can see the explicit measures show you this calculator symbol, the implicit measures show you that. So if I click on there, I can see my formula up here. If I click on this one, I do not see any formula. And if you do want to use this one, you can then choose your aggregation between sums and averages, etc., like in the regular Excel. But for good practice, try and use these ones and try and make your own ones, because it means you can reuse them, you can predetermine number formats, you can name them whatever you want. And also, if you reuse them, then fixing something in the and the first one will fix all the dependent ones, as I mentioned earlier. In fact, I even hide the ones that I don't need. And then if I unclick view hidden, then you only see the ones that you want to see, the ones that you can use. Let's do something different. We're going to do is Thailand. So whether something is Thailand or not. And we're going to do that using an if formula. So let's add a measure. So in home tab or in table tools, you have new measure. And here we're going to say is Honda. I'm going to say equals if. So essentially you return the number one if it's Honda, return number zero otherwise. And if, now I'm going to say sponsor, but note that it doesn't come up in the drop-down list as I type because it is 
something that is not pre-aggregated. You need to pre-aggregate everything. Now you might think, how do I pre-aggregate a text value? You need to use the values function. Values will, it says it here, but it will return the unique values of a column. Uh, and in another context, it does something different. So table name or column name, I'm going to say sponsor. Note that now it comes out in the dropdown list, press tab to lock that in, and then close my brackets for the values function. And now I can go back to my F formula equals from speech marks Honda, then return one, otherwise return zero. Close my brackets and it pops up up here is Honda. If I drag that into the canvas, it's not going to show me anything. In fact, it's going to give me an error. Now this would come in useful if, for example, you want to format something based on the color. So here I can say, for example, sponsor and concerts, and I want to go here and I can choose the bars, FX, and I can say based on the field to be is Honda, and it's going to be you know, lowest, highest, that's okay. Otherwise I could do rules of field values as well, but it's going to work the same here. You can see that it's a different color when it's Honda. So this is one use case, but actually if has a lot of use cases in itself. Another useful one is to have a new measure of selected value. So I'm going to go new measure again. I'm going to say chosen sponsor equals, and I'm going to use this one called selected value. Press tab to look that in. And then you either have the column name. So essentially what have you selected? So I'm going to do sponsor like that. And then you can have an alternative result. I usually will leave that blank, but then we'll see what happens if you don't. So chosen sponsor, if I drag that into the canvas like this and make that into a card, it will just show me a blank, but then when I click on something, it will show me something else. Now, what are some use cases for this? I can edit it by clicking on there. And I can say, for example, here, I can say comma, alternative results will be multiple chosen. And then I'm going to say, and charts. So it shows it like this. So, and over here, I can say, in general title, I can choose FX and which is essentially chosen sponsor like this. And I can press okay. And now it will show me that one based on whatever is clicked. So these are some use cases, but actually selected value has a lot, a lot of use cases. Note that Power BI will put your measure in a specific table. It sometimes gets it wrong, which is quite annoying. You can't drag and drop it, but if you go here in home table, you can choose to put it in the one that you want to. That's in measure tools. It's good practice to do this, even to add folders. And also you can format your numbers. That's, this is text, so this won't work. But for this one, you can choose the number formats like this. You can even type in a specific number format in here if you know the code automatically on your own. So I'm going to add a distinct count of singers. So there's three, three, four, and four, but I want to know who those are. Now, there is another feature to be able to write more advanced measures, which is quick measures like this. I love quick measures. So if you click on it, then if you have the newest version, you'll see it like this. Otherwise, you'll see it pop up. But I'll show you how to turn this on if you don't see it like this. So I can say, for example, here, I'm um, concatenated list of values where you have field and you have the numbers before truncation. So I'm going to say, well, singers into a field, and I'm going to say um, five, and five will mean that I will always see it. So it writes this really complicated DAX formula for you. And over here, it has a list of singer values. So if I tick on that in the table, it will list them out here, which is really nice. Now, if I'd have done like uh, three, it would have written out the first three and then written et cetera afterwards. Something I don't usually use unless I have a reason to do it. But yeah, there you go. It's pretty cool. I really, really like this one. Um, other things that you have in here that you can look into are these ones. These use the um, the X family of things. So I won't go into that in these videos. But when you are going to use one of these, make sure you kind of understand it before you put it in. Filtered value. These use calculate that we've looked at. Time intelligence, really, really useful to use as well. And running totals I like as well. These ones, I tend to do them on my own. But if you're, a, if you're new to this experience, then it's definitely a good idea to... Uh, use some of these calculations. Particularly, I love this concatenated list of values. And brand new is suggestions. And if you don't see it like this, I will show you how to do it in a second, but this is pretty cool. So you can say, for example, top three singers by sales. And then if you click generate, it will give you this. So these are the top three, which is pretty cool. So it just shows you the top three like that. This is quite advanced DAX that it writes for you. And there, there are some things that it can do. For example, you know, if sponsor is Coca-Cola, and it comes out with a drop down list. This means that it knows what it's doing. Then six, otherwise two. I don't want the quarter. I'm just going to have two like that. Let's click generate. It's not perfect. Here it is. It's, it's using selected value and an if formula. Perfect. So it is using some of the stuff that we've covered so far, and but it is good to know what you're doing if you are going to add it this way. Now it's brand new from October, 2022. If you don't see it, go to file and then options and settings and then options. And then I tend to go to preview features and just take everything because most of these are pretty useful. 
Once you tick it, it will tell you you have to restart. What we're looking for here is quick measure suggestions. Press OK, and it will tell you that it requires a restart. If you are outside of the US, then there are some extra admin settings that you have to do in your tenant. I'll uh, post a link for what you need to do in the description of this video as well. Great, so I love quick measures, and I love how to do DAX inside Power BI and Excel. So my name is David Nyman. If you like this video, then I do tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm coming on my channel. So subscribe if you want to see more on this kind of content. Thanks for watching.